just like things you're thinking about. It can be more on their like projects maybe that they were working on in 1882 as well, um, and just things that their presentations are helping you connect with after after being such thoughtful listeners. Yeah, and if you all maybe whenever asked a question, maybe stand up and you know address. So I'll start. Yeah. yeah. So I'm. I'm. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's awesome. What you guys have put together is so cool. I think really I I go to all these events because uh, one I care and I'm also like it's a family thing. But I had no idea like the meaningful and depth of what you guys have done. It's really really cool. I um and I'm really interested in what's next, right? Like the summer's over, and I honestly think that a lot of that stuff has great potential from track, to have more traction from the curriculum to research further in, in Greek life to even getting shirts and, and the tours going. So maybe going down the line just quickly, uh, have you guys thought about what's next with your particular projects? And yeah, when, when can we buy shirts and stuff? <laughs> <laughs> Which direction? Or whichever. Take the lead. Yeah. <laughs> in the way of uh, 
and other information about, say, uh, Chinese or Asian Americans who joined mainstream Caucasian or mixed, you know, ethnicity, different, uh, you know, Greek letter organizations, and also sort of the reverse of that, were there others that were actually trying to diversify themselves in, in becoming a little more open? First, maybe they were Chinese American, they became more Asian American, but maybe getting others involved as well. And that's why I have a second question too in a second. Yeah, so actually um, I didn't really look as much into um, the presence of Asian Americans in um, you know, dominantly um, white fraternities and sororities, but from my experience at GW, a lot of people um, who are identifying as Asian American um, and join um, a so-called typical white frat or sorority, a lot of people didn't know that multicultural grief um, was an option. I know I didn't when I went into it. I was very adverse to the thought of joining a sorority, thinking that it would just be like, you know, everything that horrible that they, you see in like the news and TV. Um, I didn't know that was an option, so I think um, a lot of people join these organizations and um, they're completely happy in them, but a lot of times they didn't just weren't aware of their options um, going into it. So um, that could also be a reason why maybe there aren't as many people participating in these specifically Asian interest um, organizations. And also, we always stress that it's Asian interest nowadays, hoping to be more inclusive because we actually do have um, people in our um, sorority who aren't Asian American who are um, Caucasian and also um, African American. But um, we're, it's sort of um, a safe space that we've created for people who are interested in Asian culture, um, want to learn more about the play and the history of Asian Americans in America. And also, um, uh, most of the organizations that I mentioned that were um, formed in the early 20th century started off as specifically Chinese American and Japanese American, but all of them, and there are on the West Coast mainly more specific um, Filipino American organizations, Japanese American, Korean American, but a lot of them, um, ex they're, they're not gonna be like, oh, you can't join because you're not Chinese American. A lot of them have like um, branched out to being more um, Asian American. Yeah, how about your question? Um, Thanks, y'all. This was like, I feel like I'm repeating what everyone else is saying because it was really <laughs> hell dope to see all y'all do this. Um, I, uh, people from GW know, we uh, don't have much of this, if any, <laughs> the in-house. Um, so yeah, this was, this was great. Um, I kind of want to ask about, and this is, this is sort of a general question, um, about sort of the identity of Asian American because that's like a political term. Some dude was just sitting there like, oh, there's people from the Asia, let's call them Asian American. And obviously we're not all with, you know, I'm Filipino, uh, you know, there's, there's so many differences, so many nuances. And uh, oftentimes the Asian American narrative is something that we're just sort of like figuring out as we go along here, like, you know, sort of constructing and then other people are saying what it should be that aren't Asian American, you know, all this stuff. So uh, what is the value of creating uh, like an Asian American narrative? like? And is there one to be created? Um, it's, it's sort of like something that uh, I was picking up from you know, everyone. Of course, we all have such different experiences here. So what, you know, what does it mean to be creating an Asian American narrative? Um, I was just going to say, from a historical standpoint, the term Asian American was coined by Yuji Ichioka and Emma G um, in the Asian American movement, which was in just like late 1960s um, through, uh, like through the 1970s. Um, and like the Asian American movement was very, um, it was very like um, pan ethnic and interracial. Um, and before that, um, like the Asian American activism that was happening wasn't very much like like they were kind of um, singular in terms of like the ethnicities that were involved. So like you have you have like the Chinese American court cases or like. Um, the Japanese American redress movement, but they weren't really like working together, and like the Asian American movement brought those groups of people together. And so I think one um, one reason for coining the term Asian American was to um, sort of 
really bring the communities of different types of Asian Americans together um, and also really stress that these people are Americans because the movement worked a lot with like African Americans and like Latinx Americans as well. Yeah. As for your question about like what is the importance of building an Asian American narrative, like what is it? Um, I, I mentioned this um, in my presentation, but it really is like this idea that the Asian American movement has this kind of identity crisis of they don't know like what is, what isn't, and how to like, create bonding between these groups. So, but like for a lot of Asian Americans, the stories that they have are very similar. Like if like in like groups like this and in settings like this, stories like my parents are immigrants, they came at this time, they've had these hardships are very common and they're very normal. But it's almost surprising when you go to like a predominantly white space how how interesting or like how special that story is to them because it's just not common. So bringing these groups together, again, fights the divide and conquer idea of like that we can treat minorities as these little voices, but then the Asian American story, like narrative, brought, if brought together under one voice, is a lot more stronger than its parts. Like the sum is greater than the total of its parts. And also I think continuing with what Jaja said also, I think that Asian America as it stands now is a result of, um, as, as a result of an effort to stand up against being silenced for so long with things like the Exclusion Act and all these exclusionary immigration policies as well as um, the model minority myth that we're more familiar with. And so I think creating the Asian American narrative is um, just continuing that effort to um, actually voice out um, our story. I also think the Asian American term um, can help kind of create an Asian American voting bloc. Um, because a lot of our issues do get ignored when, the, you know, when it comes to elections, especially with this one coming up. And so with just Chinese American, Filipino American, Indian American, that is already, like that's even smaller than we already are. And so creating an Asian American narrative, at least when it comes to voting, um, could force candidates to care. Um, which sounds very pessimistic, I know. But um, it would force people to start caring and, but also just like to exist within the community, I think they're like, you know, obviously we're not a monolith. Um, so there isn't a like prereq, right, to be like kind of part of the community, but also like the community needs to exist to kind to force white candidates or like candidates not of Asian descent to care about the Asian vote and like we don't get ignored um, with elections, et cetera, et cetera. Any other questions or reactions? before we kind of break up into just more conversations, or we're still open for the hashtag why API lit. We're still accepting submissions. Um, any other last thoughts? Yeah. Uh, I just want to thank you. You're so welcoming. I'm in awe of all of these things. I, I'm a native Washingtonian. I have learned more in the last two hours <laughs> and about the Asian American community, and I'm just so grateful, and I think all of your your programs are the, the, the Greek that I want to take this this tour. <laughs> the the, the, the uh, t-shirts. It was so all of your projects are so creative. So I, I'm just all struck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.